All right, well, I will get us started. Our title is Collaboration and Technology Decisions, the LMS Transition at Southeastern. And a lot of you already know a little bit that Southeastern has been evaluating learning management systems for the last little less than a year. We started organizing and getting ready a year or so ago, and we really um, jumped in in August. And we've done a lot to involve faculty, staff, students, administration, as well as other people around the state. And so it, we wanted to do this presentation to um, kind of show what the results of that have been. Sorry, I had to go uh, shut the door. An animal opened my door while I was we were preparing here. So um, we have a, a diverse committee of people who were involved in this process. Um, we have uh, six faculty, four staff, two administrators, and one student who were all engaged in this work. Um, we began in August and continued that work um, I would say even uh, through the very end of March, even though we um, had a proposal sooner than that because we wanted to make contact with all of our stakeholder groups. And so this is just a list of who those um, members are. And I am Kate Shannon and I was the chair. Um, Carl Frankel is also with us here. He's a faculty member. And then Crystal Smith is faculty and also the director of our CIDT. And I always do this wrong. So I think it's the Center for an instructional design development <laughs> i always want to say design <laughs> development um t technology oh sorry yes it's oh. the center for instructional development and technology i was yes. using the chat <laughs> paying attention to help <laughs> And so uh, we, the three of us, were sort of this very intense core who were constantly really pushing the agenda. So um, anyway, we're here to share with you today. Um, just this is a snapshot of sort of the timeline of activities that we were engaged in. So as I mentioned, we formed in August. Um, and right away, we started developing um, surveys. So Carl developed uh, student survey, and then he helped me develop a faculty staff survey, and we administered those um, in September. We also held a forum um, for faculty and staff to come ask questions, learn more about what was going to be happening, and that was another opportunity for us to solicit some input um, from those who attended. From those surveys and the forum, we began developing evaluation categories and criteria um, really based on what faculty, staff, and students indicated were the priorities that we should consider in an LMS. And we started having um, demos with uh, three LMS platforms that we were considering. Those demos continued into October. Um, and then we were so lucky to have Crystalla because she put together for us um, with her contacts a state panel of um, different university uh, representatives who had experience with each of the three platforms. And they could really provide us with a lot of insights about what their experience had been like. Um, we held another open forum in October. That was actually um, through the Distance Education Council. So we are also members of the Distance Education Council. This LMS Transition Committee is a subset um, from that council. And so we held an up open forum that was a Distance Education Council meeting and an open meeting for faculty and staff. Um, and we shared what we've been doing so far um, and more information about kind of the direction we were headed and, and those criteria that were really guiding us. We also began to um, acquire uh, sandbox um, options, sandbox uh, access so that we could build courses and uh, use each of those platforms to you know, explore the possibilities of each of those tools. 
um, platforms and their tools. And um, that experience allowed us to um, craft better questions um, for the vendors and uh, gave us an opportunity to have some deep dives. So we we asked questions you know, about features that maybe we were having a little bit of trouble getting them to function. Um, and we asked them to kind of show us, so how do you really do this? Or we couldn't find this part. So it was just an opportunity for a more informed um, sort of conversation. And that also helped us, those experiences and conversations helped us to continue to um, fine tune uh, those criteria that we were using um, to determine which platform would best meet our needs. Um, we also in January began to ask for vendor quotes and um, we had demos and in more cases conversations about what those quotes entail, um, what kinds of support, for instance, or um, the level of bells and whistles that we would have access to with the different quotes available. Moving into February, we were really focusing on the third party tools that would be um, useful and appropriate for us to integrate with each of the platforms. And so um, we began to have more uh, developed demos with them. And then also in February, we narrowed our choices down to just two LMS um, platforms. And we held an open forum, which uh, we'll talk more about in a moment, but the information fair was the um, sort of, uh, forgot the word, format <laughs> for that open forum. So there was, uh, it wasn't just a conversation, there were lots of opportunities to network with um, vendors and also representatives or references that vendors recommended so that they could tell us more about those tools. Um, we held presentations to our academic council, our faculty senate, um, and our student government association. Um, we actually added on to this our staff senate, and I'm not sure why I failed to get that included there. So we really went to all of our constituent bodies and you know, kind of let them know the direction we were headed in. And that open forum, the information fair, was another opportunity for those participants to give us some feedback um, in the presentations with uh, academic council, faculty senate, staff senate, student government association, Governance Association. Um, we also fielded some questions and we had to do a little research in some cases because uh, questions were asked that we hadn't explored yet. So that was a great opportunity. Going into March, we continued to look at that analysis. Um, I'm sorry, those criteria, and we continued to consider the feedback and or questions that we had received, trying to find answers to those. And we had even some last minute sort of vendor conversations um, so that we could get those questions answered. Finally, in March, we reviewed those final quotes and statements of work, um, and then the committee voted uh, over spring break um, on the platform that they would see as the best option for our faculty, staff, and students. We also voted on those third-party tools at that time. And then we had to very quickly craft our proposal. So uh, Crystalla, thank goodness, um, spent a good deal of the break getting that started for us. And then we submitted that to the Distance Education Council. And we'll talk more about where it went next on the uh, later in the presentation. Really quick before we move on, uh, there was a question in the chat about change management. And I was just going to note that really from the beginning, we know that this is a huge thing. We know that faculty, staff, and students are all invested in this and are going to care deeply about it. So that was a big part of why we're doing an extensive evaluation at all, that we didn't want it to just be anyone's decision and to just impose on everyone. So the design of the committee representing faculty, staff, students, and administrators was really important to us, that it's a shared um, experience and that we were very thorough and involved everyone throughout the process. So those open forums and communicating a lot. Um, she also mentioned the piece where we narrowed it from three to two, and I'll go ahead and and uh, say the one that we eliminated was Blackboard, which is the one we currently have. 
And in some ways, that's a, a piece of that change management because we're kind of ripping off the Band-Aid. So everyone that thinks that they might have a chance of having something familiar now has to cope and go through that <laughs> grieving process. <laughs> and we had tried to explain to them that Blackboard, even to Blackboard Ultra, is a change no matter what. But of course, there's a lot who hoped that that wasn't true. Um, and so going ahead and announcing that early, that certainly made a lot of people uncomfortable, but change management involves some discomfort and it's managing the discomfort. And so um, I think that that was a positive step that we did. And we'll talk more about the change management piece as we go throughout. <laughs> so um, obviously uh, one of the first things we did was construct the surveys, both for students and faculty. Um, you know, if we need criteria to evaluate platforms and all of these third party add-ons, um, well, we need to gather the criteria from um, what's deemed uh, important uh, to all the constituencies on campus. Um, so we put together the surveys very quickly, um, and we did so in such a way that there were some open-ended questions, but a lot of the important data was gathered um, from some questions that were paralleled. Um, so for instance, there were many questions about how satisfied are you with this in our current platform, um, as well as um, similar questions uh, based on the same topic, how important are these things to your teaching, to your education, to the platform? And so this allowed us to figure out, okay, um, who's unhappy, who's happy with stuff, uh, what do we feel is important? Um, if people are unhappy with something, but they also deem it's not important, we can just sort of throw that out and not include that in our criteria. Um, and then having also the uh, open forum feedback and, and everything else, we, we had a really solid place to start with in evaluating um, the platforms and it gave us a target. Um, I know at one point we actually had a spreadsheet of certain things and I started filling in instructions on like, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do, do this, because these things were deemed important from the surveys and the forums, um, so on and so forth. Um, and here's just a, a smattering of some of the examples of the things that faculty and staff found um, that we got from the faculty and staff, as well as from students. And I wanted to tie this into Crystal's talk earlier. Uh, the students, when we met with them, they're like, oh, can we please not have to go through gold orientation every single semester more than once? You know, we're like, yeah, we'll look into that. Um, but, you know, a lot of it was um, stuff that we expected, you know, we want to have uh, some good grading, good calendars. Uh, Gradebooks should be much more integrated. Same with the calendar. We want to be able to do video editing and video responses. And I want to be able to experience this on a tablet and a phone because I don't have a computer because I'm a student, you know, that type of deal. Um, but they allowed us to have a framework in which to evaluate all of the uh, LMS and the add-ons. All right, so from here, it was a lot of homework. <laughs> so all of the committee had to get in and really this had a lot to do with those sandboxes that Kate mentioned earlier with the timeline, um, that we had three different platforms that we were testing out a lot of things. And this was also an important piece to have a lot of differences in because, you know, Kate jumped in and wanted to see rubrics. I jumped in and wanted to see how to make a new course or enroll new students. Uh, we had IT staff on there, so they wanted to see back end and analytics and uh, Carl is a fan of analytics and he wanted to see how some things would work in specifically his class for math. Um, so everyone had different priorities that they worked on, which was good because if we're only looking at one piece, we can't fully represent the university. Um, so the homework piece involved that's uh, a fair bit of nagging on our part, but <laughs> but all of the members had a chance to go in and uh, test out several different things. And we met 
several times throughout that process to to compare notes, see if someone could figure things out. So outside of just meeting with uh, the vendors and asking questions, we also just collaborated among ourselves to see if we were having the same problems or if we had figured out some things, what would this be like if it was us uh, just figuring it out on our campus? How complicated would it be? How do we think the people on our campus would respond to it? Um, you can go to the next one. So this is where we involve a lot of people. This is my favorite slide. <laughs> um, so there were two parts where we involved references, vendor references. And so the first was that state panel, which some of the people here were on that panel and it was super helpful. And we went back to uh, notes that were made on that numerous times throughout the process. Um, we used a lot of those notes to answer questions other people asked us. We used a lot of those notes to form our questions for the vendors um, and to shape the things that we looked at in the sandboxes. So that was incredibly helpful. Um, we also later had an information fair where we had some of the same people and some different people um, at the information fair. Um, I think Kate might be talking about that in just a minute, but we had both vendors and references there. Um, and that was in a format where people could go move around freely and ask questions. So it wasn't that everyone was hearing everything, which had pros and cons. <laughs> um, with the panel, everybody heard all of the answers with the information fair. Everybody could look at specifically what they were interested in. So for example, one of the staff on the committee is our accessibility coordinator. And so she made sure that she talked to each of the LMS uh, vendors as well as uh, the person we had there from uh, Uja Panorama to talk to them about the accessibility features that they have. And so that was very helpful. And from what I understand, that was, um, that was kind of the key for her making her decision was the information that she gathered at that information fair. Oh, this is still me, all right. <laughs> um, so from there, we, uh, we actually started to try to narrow it down and uh, we're told, no, 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 we haven't got quotes, we can't go there. So we uh, went straight in, we jumped straight into quotes and negotiations. And so we started meeting with the vendors and um, each of the LMS vendors uh, and some of the third parties met with the three of us plus the IT, uh, the CIO and the CFO. And so uh, we were able to ask a lot of specific questions about the pricing um, and work that pricing down, negotiate it more to be catered to our university. Um, and it was also a little bit of a game of, well, they said they could do this. How can you beat that? <laughs> and so we were able to play that game quite a bit. Um, and both the, the LMSs and third parties responded very well to that. Um, and so we were able to get really good pricing, we felt like. And that is still ongoing because that was me playing the game, but the CFO and CIO might now uh, get in there and play the game a little further. But, uh, but we were able to get really far with them through that process. And then uh, this one uh, just shows some of the third party tools. And we were going to mention why we were looking at the third party tools in case that wasn't uh, clear. If we we knew from the beginning that some learning management systems had certain tools built in and others, we would have to go and find a third party. For example, Blackboard has SafeAssign built in, but neither Canvas nor D2L had a similar tool that's already there. So we would need to adopt something like uh, turn it in. We also primarily from that uh, state panel made it a priority to have studio or something like studio. Um, and that was also something that we had feedback um, that we needed some kind of video tool. And so um, if we went with Canvas, we knew that Studio was an option. And so if we didn't go with Canvas, we decided we needed to investigate other options so that we could still have the same services. Uh, we also knew that we had Blackboard Ally already with Blackboard, 
but we found out later that there is at least one competitor <laughs> that's not hasn't been in the game very long but that they have a competitor so we wanted to investigate that as well so uh, so at that information fair we actually had uh, three video solution options which were studio yuja and uh, panopto we also we already had blackboard ally um, and we had already eliminated blackboard and didn't want to uh them to come and be grumpy so <laughs> so we didn't have ally at the fair but we did have yuja panorama so that we could ask questions and compare our experience to their answers um we also had um let's see turn it in also was there for the um the integrity piece um and we also had K16, and K16 is something that was mentioned by both references and vendors multiple times. Uh, and I didn't mention that earlier. We started working with them earlier. That was part of the Sandbox experience. They converted courses into those other learning management systems for us to play with. And then we got a lot of feedback uh, from references for that too, and they were also there. So um, you've heard a little bit already about the LMS information fair, but we did have uh, pretty good attendance um, and we did use a tool called InSpace, which is a um, video conferencing tool that's just a little bit more interactive or a lot more interactive than things like Zoom because you can actually um, choose for yourself where you wanna go, who you wanna talk to. Um, and as Crystal mentioned, we set this up as a conference, um, which is one of the options that InSpace has. And so you can set up several different spaces and it's almost like having breakout rooms within breakout rooms um, so that you can be able to go and talk to whoever, the, whoever you like. Um, and we had 42 responses to our survey um, that there were three primary activities and we've already kind of hinted at this to begin with we heard from vendors um, both lms uh, vendors and all of those third-party tools that crystal just mentioned then we had our um, dec open forum meeting so that was an opportunity for us to again share with stakeholders faculty and staff the um, process that we had been uh, going through and what the next steps would be and to really reiterate to them that their feedback during this event um, was really important to us and that we wanted them to be able to have a voice and, and share what they thought about these tools. Um, and then finally, they met with the references, um, again, partners, and many of them are you guys, um, that were there to provide us with that information, which we so appreciated. When we took a look at the information that we received, um, we this was from the faculty and staff who responded. Um, overwhelmingly, we saw that Canvas um, got a big share of the vote. Uh, D2L um, got about 20% of the vote, but we also had about 25% um, who said they'd be happy with whatever it is that we chose. Um, and at least one person who said they didn't really care. Um, but then we also asked them, you know, about in, if, if um, the LMS if D2L was um, adopted or recommended, would they be satisfied? Um, and most people said, yes, that would still be okay with them. Um, if Canvas was selected, yes, they would still be okay with that. So we felt like that gave us good support to be able to make the decision that would be in the best interest of faculty, staff, and students. Um, and that, that we felt confident that they, um, they trusted us to make a good choice for them. Let me toss in here with that slide sure. that that was an important part of the change management also that we recognized that we had done a decent enough job of informing the faculty and preparing them and they were well enough informed that that all of these are workable all of these were are going to be a similar process we're going to be going through change no matter what they can do the same things um but having this piece of the survey, I think in some ways was our favorite part of the whole survey, just to know that, okay, we do still have some freedom. We, nobody is completely against any of it. Well, you know, one person was, but, <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, the campus would be fine with whatever choice. So, um, 
you know, at some, we had a timeline to adhere to. And so uh, as time was drawing for us to uh, make a vote, um, we started meeting with all of our constituencies one last time before we made a vote to make sure that there weren't any last minute questions or concerns we had to address. So, um, uh, you know, we met with academic council and I think one of the important um, questions that was brought up there was with regards to uh, student appeals, you know, how long are we going to be able to back up courses, you know, is uh, how are we going to do that when we transition, you know, because some of our courses over the last few years will be on Blackboard and now they'll be someplace else, you know, and so we had to address those questions. Um, student government, of course, asked about uh, gold, you know, um, but as a, as a general rule, a, a lot of it was just informing them like, hey, we're getting ready to start finalizing things. Um, and so uh, basically we were there to prepare those decision making bodies to vote on the upcoming proposal, um, which we'll get into here very shortly. All right, so on March 11th, um, was that, did we have a DEC meeting? We should have had a drum roll, but not. <laughs> yeah, right. Did, did we have a DEC? That was our LMS transition committee meeting. Okay. So it was just the LMS transition yeah. committee. And so um, at that meeting, uh, we opened up voting. And this was the Friday right before spring break. And so it was open for the entirety of spring break. And so some of the obsessive compulsive people like me I'm traveling for spring break to St. Louis, I get there and I just press refresh on the Google poll just to see like, come on, who's voted, who's voted, you know? And, and uh, you know, it took all the way. Uh, so it, it was open until noon, the Monday after spring break. So I was really hoping that at some point over spring break, we would have sort of had a, a clear, decisive one way or another, but that was not the case because um, I think Crystal had called this, all of the IT people waited until Monday to vote. Was that correct? After 11. Yeah, after 11, yeah. So they had like less than an hour left before the dead, deadline. So uh, without further ado and a drum roll, I think we go to the next, oh wait, no, we don't go to the next slide, do we? <laughs> No, we don't. Uh, yeah, never well, mind. So I do. So anyway, so the vote was um, for Canvas. Okay. Um, there were. What was the final count? Do you guys remember? It has it on there. Well, there it is. Seven three. <laughs> I'm not even reading it. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Canvas. Yeah. So I'm too busy reading the comments versus looking at the slide. So anyway, <laughs> so there were seven votes for Canvas, three for D2L and three abstentions. So even if all three of those abstentions voted for D2L, we still would have gone with Canvas. And the obvious abstentions, um, those were one faculty, one staff, one administrator, which means we still had faculty, staff, administration, and students all represented in that decision. Yep. Yep. Okay, now we pause and go to the next slide. <laughs> we'll just want to point out um, Wait, that. No, 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 no. no. no? Go to the next okay. slide. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> we'll go back to that later. I yeah. remember. <laughs> okay. So after the vote um, was tallied, um, one of the things that we tried to, to ask of all the LMS transition committee members was. Um, to include a rationale for their vote, if possible. It, we didn't make it mandatory, um, but a decent amount of people did actually um, include a rationale. And that helped form um, the proposal that we crafted, um, which made hopefully the uh, justification, um, much, you know, which hopefully made the proposal much more convincing. So here's just a little bit of a snapshot of um, part of our proposal. So if you'll notice on this oh, quick, one quick, quick thing. So we did Canvas, uh, UJA for video, UJA Panorama for accessibility, Turnitin, similarity and originality for plagiarism, and InSpace as the, the built-in collaborative video conferencing piece. So this was the overall proposal um, that we started pushing forward with all of the constituencies on campus. All right. Next slide now. 
There we go. I'm getting picky with my slide control. Sorry. Now, and so um, as an example, uh, the rationale for recommending Canvas was, you know, we included some bullet points about faculty preference. Um, and once again, um, buzzwords: the change management process, um, uh, students, student. Uh, impressions and interest. Uh, the digital portfolio, I believe, was a really big selling point. Um, one of the big things, um, as was listed here, uh, basically, you know, your portfolio goes with you everywhere, even after you graduate, um, which is not what we currently have it um, as. And one of the big selling points um, from the IT point of view was that, hey, if we have good connections with all sorts of people and other institutions who also have Canvas. So if we run into problems, we can just phone them, you know, phone a friend, you know, that sort of deal. Um, so anyway, there we go. All right. I don't know if that was enough of a climax, but Canvas won. <laughs> Canvas won. Canvas won. Yes. So after um, we wrote up the proposal, okay, um, we sent it to the Distance Education Council. They voted on it. Um, and you'll notice the timeline here. Uh, the voting ended March 21st, and we already had this really nice proposal written up and ready for a vote um, in the Distance Education Council that um, the, the Learning Transition uh, Committee was a subset of, you know, that was basically our whole goal was just get this proposal, craft it, and then send it. So the, our, our year long plus uh, process culminated in this. And the DEC voted 15 for one against, don't know why, uh, one abstention. Um, so we were confident on that. I think Crystalla kept giving us updates on that, you know, so we were all excited. Um, and then that proposal went to the academic council. Uh, same thing, it was voted on and uh, unanimously, uh, faculty senate. So all within essentially one week, we had a very strong support for our proposal from a large constituency on campus. And then- Can I just say faculty council and faculty senate to have a unanimous vote was that was exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can't agree on anything to save their lives. I mean, I, I, when I, a few times I've been on the faculty senate, it took us a whole year to fine tune the faculty absence request form. You know, let alone something as momentous as this. But I, I believe a large portion of why it moved forward so quickly is because we had been in meetings and we had addressed people's concerns. And we had informed them and we had a solid rationale in this proposal. Okay. And so finally it and, landed. And we met with them to present that proposal and review all of it in detail. Also, it wasn't just that we sent it and then hoped, but we, we went through it. Right. Uh, item and, by item. And we even um, offered to do it with the staff Senate. Uh, um, we found out that they were meeting, um, but, it was too soon and they had enough stuff on their plate. So um, lastly, it landed at the feet of the executive committee and I guess that's where it still lies, right? Yep, still pending at the moment. <laughs> yep. So the faculty and staff have chosen, but it is not actually final at this point. <laughs> but I will, I, I wanted to say really quick that it was a very difficult decision. We honestly did not know what the end result, what that vote was going to be until 11.30 a.m. Yeah. that Monday after spring break, even right up till the end. We thought there was, I honestly thought D2L was going to win um, for a lot of it. And and a lot of this, I think, I know even myself, I went back and forth a number of times. And so there were like that last few weeks, we had a lot of, additional meetings added in trying to to look at um, extra details and things because it was um, it was a really difficult decision and so I really think that we would have been very happy with either one um, in a lot of ways I think D2L fits my personality better but <laughs> Canvas served my job better <laughs> and so um, 
So there was a lot of things to weigh in there, but they're both excellent options. The one that we chose was Canvas, but I do want to make it clear that we really, really liked both of those options. Yeah, I, I kept holding out for D2L like until the very end. I'm like, man, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, you know? Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll uh, mirror Crystal's comments. I really had no idea which way it was going, which is why I just kept refreshing so much. And also when we very first started this process, <clears throat> my first meeting that I had with the reps from D2L, they asked me if, um, just point blank, they were like, is this, a, can you just be really honest with us and tell us, is this a legit evaluation or has the decision been made and we're just helping you check some boxes? <laughs> and, and I told them that this was absolutely a legitimate evaluation. And then when I had to tell them, it was so sad to have to tell them. I tried, I wrote a really nice email and they still called me and I had to do the breakup call thing, but <laughs> that was a hard phone call, but it was still very positive. And I, I brought up then I had that this was very legit evaluation. And they uh, said then that this was the most thorough, most legit evaluation that they had ever seen at a university. So we were really, I was really proud of that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, even though we gave all these talks to faculty senate and student government, academic council, you know, and information is supposed to flow down, sort of like, you know, trickle down economics, whatever, right? You'd be amazed how many people like didn't know even after six months of this that we were going to be transitioning to a new LMS, you know, even with the emails that we were sending to the entire faculty and staff. Um, and so one of the ways in which um, we were able to help disseminate information was through some of our other um, activities on campus. So um, I, as um, president of our um, universities chapter of the American Association of University Professors, AAUP, um, was able to tell everyone, hey, this is what's going on. This is how things are going. Um, you know, and Kate and Crystal were in on some of those meetings. And uh, we invite other people on campus. You know, you don't have to be a member. You can just show up. Um, and so uh, the AUP has helped form um, how we function on campus as well. So we're, we're, we're a very integral part of campus, I would like to say. A lot of um, the wordage in our APPM, our um, Policies and Procedures Manual, is taken directly from the AAUP's Red Book. Um, so it was just one more way we were able to disseminate information to some people who were completely surprised. Oh, hey, we're changing LMSs, you know? And, and we were also able to gather, gather more information from them. And so Kate's up next. So um, uh, as the, I am currently the acting chair of the faculty Senate, but I'm also on the executive committee and have been throughout the year. And so that also gave me the opportunity to connect with um, different entities, different meeting groups, um, meeting with the president, making sure that we're communicating about this all the time. So it's very um, transparent what we're engaged in and that those communications are happening all the time um, during faculty senate meetings. If we weren't on the agenda, you know, to present something, I was sure in announcements to make sure that people, you know, were keeping it on their radar. Um, and in that sort of capacity with Faculty Senate, I had a lot of faculty in my department and even from other departments asking questions about the LMS that maybe they would not have if I hadn't had that, um, you know, uh, stump to stand up and preach about it. So uh, I really do feel like that's been a very important piece um, that we we both, Carl and I, and I'm also a member of AAUP. So, you know, we're, we're very um, aware of all the different peoples that might be on campus that we need to make sure and reach out to. Um, and then, you know, just to reiterate that we worked with staff senate and student government to share this process and these activities as well, because these are not just faculty tools, you know, these are used by faculty, staff and students. And so we wanted to make sure we really are meeting the needs across the board. And, 
you know, um, we're still waiting to hear about administration's thoughts, you know, on this um, recommendation. But we did have two members of that, that executive team on the LMS transition committee from, I think it was August 21st, <laughs> because when we first heard about this, so they, they've known about it a really long time and they have been a part of all of those meetings and conversations. And, and just to point out who those were, one was the CFO. So the budgeting process he's been in from the beginning. So while we're asking for a whole lot of money, he's known well as we're going. And then the other was um, a dean in the academic affairs. So we've, we've involved um, the uh, executive team really well, I feel like. I see a question about um, Blackboard, why we moved away from Blackboard. Do you want to so, feel that, Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> so there were a few things. Um, I will say that Blackboard was the lowest cost option. So that was surprising to a lot of people. In fact, a lot of people assumed that Canvas would be the cheapest and that that's why everybody had Canvas. And in fact, Canvas is the most expensive option. Um, so that was a surprise. And, you know, uh, that we did do a lot of negotiating canvas and d2l by the end we're within one to two thousand dollars per year of each other so uh, we got we got it to the point that cost was not a factor between those two <clears throat> and obviously cost was not why we kicked out blackboard um <clears throat> uh, one of the pieces was that blackboard did not have a portfolio option of any kind um and both d2l and canvas did um blackboard also didn't have some features that it currently does. We would lose features when we moved over. Um, for example, Blackboard Ultra doesn't have a survey tool, which is mind blowing to me. Um, Blackboard Ultra also, um, some of the adaptive release functions like just basing something on submission only instead of a grade isn't there. And they tell us that it's on the roadmap, it'll be there soon, uh, but we're evaluating what's there and not what is to come. Uh, so hopefully that those things do come, but they weren't there in time for this evaluation. Um, maybe that's unfortunate, but we are excited about what we did choose. So uh, pretty much everyone on the committee, especially the faculty, were very ready for a change. <laughs> and so I think, I think Blackboard's business model and some other things played a part in that. Um, but while Blackboard can do a lot of what Canvas and D2L do when you move to Blackboard Ultra, um, there were some other things that we just thought were better in the comparison with the other options. Um, one piece too, a, a huge piece in the final decision was honestly the other people in the state and what you guys are already using uh, because Canvas is where we would have the most networking opportunities. Um, that made a big difference to both me and IT. Um, so, and, and also with Blackboard Ultra, there are a lot of people who use Blackboard and who are in the process of moving to Blackboard Ultra, but we were not able to get references who had fully moved to Ultra. We were only able to find people who were piloting Ultra on small scales. And they, they told us they would get us references, but never did. Um, so that also, that hurt them quite a bit in the, uh, in the evaluation process. So, did I cover that well enough? <laughs> I think we also had some third party tool integration <coughs> issues. Um, yeah. I haven't read the whole question, right? So she also said, how much work do you expect faculty to need to need to put to transition existing courses from Blackboard to Canvas? Um, so we do, we've created a plan and we shared that in the last distance ed council meeting and we've been putting a lot of work into it already. Um, what we're planning to do is a cohort model. We will, the goal is to be fully transitioned by August of 2023, but the first courses will launch in Canvas in March. And so we'll have a phased transition for courses that start in March, May, early June, late June, and then August. Um, the, whatever 
month, whatever start faculty choose to have their courses ready by, we'll have cohorts that start meeting with us six months in advance. They'll meet with us monthly. And then the month before they'll meet with us weekly to get a lot of training and information and uh, be fully prepared. Um, so there will, there will be a lot of work to it. I had to correct faculty a couple of times when they said, CIDT said this would be easy. I said, no, I said that we would work to make it seamless. I didn't say it would be easy. <laughs> So, um, but, but yeah, there will definitely be a lot of work that's involved, but we'll be spreading that out and faculty that don't teach in one of those earlier uh, months that wouldn't be part of maybe the March pilot or one of the summer, they can choose to have one of their courses go through that cohort model and then do the rest by August. So I think we'll be able to split the faculty up pretty well. Um, and then basically within the cohorts, we'll be dividing them between the four instructional designers in CIDT to work with um, throughout to you. And we've got quite the elaborate timeline <laughs> ready to go for that. So uh, let's see what was. And as far as pushback, the faculty seem excited at this point. I think I think we braced them. We uh, let them grieve Blackboard in advance <laughs> and then. Um, by the time we made the decision, they all just wanted to know the decision, kind of like you guys were <laughs> by the end, just say it. In fact, so, we had to be careful, right? Like, are we allowed to say what our recommendation <laughs> is yet? Yeah, we wanted to spread the word. And we're like, hmm, we better be careful. <laughs> so, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, I think that because the direction of the decision, there were so many people who were already very excited about that being the possibility that just really um, helped secure it a little bit. We do have several faculty who've used Canvas. And so they they knew that they liked it better than Blackboard. Um, and so, but at, at times that may have prevented them from exploring D2L as much as they, you know, maybe could have because they were like, oh no, I like this one because I know what it is. Um, so I think that is a little bit of a hazard, but I think um, the, the change management piece, I think we're, we've given it so much time and energy as far as making sure, I mean, if you think about a concern-based adoption model, we really have um, followed that with regard to this innovation um, because, you know, we started right at the beginning with what do you want it to be able to do? You know, what are the priorities? Yes, Brett, is that our one minute timer? <laughs> okay, we have one minute left. Can I just say thank you so much for being here and so to so many of you for actually being part of this process. Um, and, you know, it was a very valuable experience for us and you made that possible as well. Yeah, thanks for that comment, Thomas. We definitely have documented a lot of the process here. Um, I'm very impressed with our transition committee. Like we really did our work on this one. And I, really quick, there was a question about the mobile app. The mobile app was definitely an important piece that we looked into all of them. I wouldn't say it was a deal breaker for any of them. Um, I don't think that that was something that we said, well, their app's not good enough, they're out. Um, but it, it was definitely an important piece and it was on uh, those from the beginning, it was on the criteria that we were looking at based on our feedback, so. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you all. This is extraordinarily helpful to see a peek behind the curtain of how you manage this change. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Thank you guys very much. This was an awesome session. Uh, and I have to ask just because I know you may have a minute or two. So Chrysla, the Okie Bug group, uh, you know, that obviously I think was a good resource, you know, having Blackboard in this collective user group, would you possibly be interested in looking at creating a different uh, user group across the state for whichever other system you all choose? I would love to. Okay. I had kind of backed off of Okie Bug for the last little while because, and I met with Blackboard multiple times uh, because I told them that 
Blackboard has become so many different things that nobody has the same thing and we can't have a productive meeting unless we're talking about something other than Blackboard. So like our meeting on virtual reality was great, yeah. but anything that was centered around Blackboard was a sales pitch at best. And so um, we really hadn't been meeting with Okiebug for quite a while. I still get invited to all of the, um, the, the user group meetings where they share a lot of insights, which is helpful. Um, but even those the last little while I felt like is inappropriate for me to go in and spy. So, <laughs> but I would, if uh, once Canvas is approved, I would love to set that up for Canvas, especially considering the networking piece was a huge uh, reason that a lot of us chose that. Yeah. And honestly, I've seen so many institutions moving to Canvas across the state and I think nationally too. Uh, cost, I think, is a big factor, but also the features you talked about today. And I teach on D2L, and I think it's a wonderful system, but I've also used Canvas as a facilitator and see the benefits there. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing today. Thank you.